So let's talk about some of the maths associated with these carbon structures. So what's this? Well, this, of course, is a cube. Everyone knows that. And what's this shape? Well, you'd say it's a sphere, isn't it, or it's a football. Actually, the mathematical name for the buckyball is actually a truncated icosahedron. Of course, nobody knows that. But the thing you kick around a football pitch is actually mathematically known as a truncated icosahedron. So let me talk you through that. Here is the icosahedron. It's a shape made out of 20 triangles, and it's got 12 corners on this structure. So if you imagine taking a sharp knife and cutting off a corner, that's mathematicians call that truncating. So if you get the icosahedron and you truncate the 12 corners, because there are five edges going to each of the corner, if I cut off one of those corners, I'd be end up with a pentagon left behind. I think you can see here, if you imagine you cut this with a, a sharp knife, you end up with a pentagon over here. So if you go around the 12 corners truncating them, you would end up with 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons left behind. And so if you take an icosahedron and you truncate it, you get the truncated icosahedron, which is actually the mathematical name for a football uh, down here. 60 corners, 20 uh, hexagons, and 12 pentagons. Uh, so the C6 is actually a truncated icosahedron. It's also a soccer ball, of course, which is a bit easy to remember. Um, there's a thing called Euler's law, which is a nice mathematical law, which applies to a lot of structures, not everything. But this is, the, if you take a, a, sh a shape, such as these beautiful crystals here, if you add the number of corners to the number of faces and take away the number of edges, you always get the same number. So you get two, for example. And you can apply this to the football. Now, if you take a football, it's easy to count the pentagons and the hexagons. And we know that it's got 60 corners because it's the C60 molecule. But how many edges does it have? Well, if you go around a football, you just lose count all the time. And you could have to cover the whole thing in post-it notes. Otherwise, you get completely lost. But actually, if you remember Euler's law, you can work it out. If corners plus faces minus edges equals 2, we know the corners are 60. The faces is 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. So 60 plus 32 minus edges equals 2. We can rearrange the formula and we can use Euler's law to prove that the number of edges in the football is 90. Or if you like, the number of bonds in C60 between the atoms is 90 bonds. So on the football, you've got 60 corners, 12 pentagons, 20 hexagons, and now we've calculated uh, 90 edges. And of course, you can use this for the other fullerene cages, not just uh, for the buckyballs. We can also re-express Euler's law instead of the corners, faces, and edges, just in terms of the type of corners. And it turns out that in a lot of cases in nature, not just in the fullerenes, but if you shake up some soap in a test tube, you get loads of soap bubbles joined together, or if you look at skeletons on animals, you often have three edges coming to one point. You don't often have four edges coming to one point in nature. So if you consider, if the only thing you apply to this is that three edges are coming to each corner, and you apply that to Euler's law and you go through the mass, you can end up in a, a different way of re-expressing it, which is actually quite useful. And that is three times the number of triangles, plus two times the number of squares, plus one times the number of pentagons, take away naught times the number of hexagons, take away one times the number of heptagons, seven sides, take away two times the number of octagons, and so on, that always equals 12. Now, for the football structure, which only has uh, pentagons and hexagons, there are no triangles, no squares, uh, no heptagons, you get that the uh, 1 times the number of pentagons plus 0 times the number of hexagons equals 12. So 0 times the number of hexagons obviously drops out. So you get the number of pentagons equals 12. So actually, you can use uh, Euler's law to prove that you actually have to have 12 pentagons in the structure if you've only got pentagons and hexagons. So the football, for example, which only has hexagons and pentagons, it has to have 12 pentagon rings. Hexagons on their own are flat. You can sort of see that this is a tiling of hexagon, uh, if you like, a bit of graphene, uh, flat hexagons. Uh, but when you put the pentagons in, each time you put a pentagon, it curves it a bit more until it rolls up into this three-dimensional structure. Um, so we need the 12 pentagons to close up the structure. If you have a really massive sheet of hexagons, you think you'd need more pentagons, but it's not true. You only need 12, and it rolls up. And you hear, here we can see the C60 molecule here. But as we go up to the bigger cages, they all actually have 12 pentagons, but a different number of hexagons. And it's true the other way. Rather than going bigger from C60, if you go down to the smaller fullerenes, they all have 12 pentagons, but a different number of hexagons. Uh, if we go back to Euler's law, corners, faces, and edges, we can re-express this 
in terms of the number of hexagons or the number of atoms. Uh, the number of atoms in a fullerene cage is two times the number of hexagons plus 20. Or we can, if you want to know the number of hexagons, it's half times the number of atoms minus 20. So you can use this to work out the number of atoms in a structure and that sort of thing. If you've got a structure with heptagons in it, seven-sided or octagons, then the maths always also shows that for every heptagon you have, you have to have an extra pentagon to balance the maths. So you can actually have fullerene structures with seven-membered rings in, but you have to have an extra pentagon. If it has an octagon in it, which is possible, you'd have to have two pentagons and so on. So you end up with 14 pentagons and an octagon and, and hexagons, for example. So let's take graphene. This isn't a round structure, so we can't use Euler's law in quite the same way. So for flat things, it turns out if you have a flat sheet of hexagons, the number of atoms in the sheet is given by 6n squared, where n is the number of layers. So you've got the central one, the second layer, and the third layer. So I'm not talking about layers one on top of the other. Uh, how many rings around the center? So this is just one hexagon. So the number of atoms in, in the simple hexagon is 6n squared, which is 6 times 1 squared, which is 6, of course. <coughs> when we go to a hexagon surrounded by hexagons, that's n equals 2. So that's going to be 6 times 2 squared, 6 times 4, and so on and so on. So we can use that to uh, predict how many atoms are in each of the graphene sheets. Now, if we take a triangle in a hexagon uh, of hexagons, the number of atoms in a triangle cut out from here is given by 3n squared, where n is the number of edges between the corners of the triangle. And I've just done this little calculation. You can work this out. It's not obvious, but it actually turns out that the number of atoms in the triangle here is 3n squared. And I'm showing it to you because when you go up into the higher fullerings, they become more and more icosahedral. And icosahedron is made of 20 triangles. So uh, if you look at the 20 triangles on an icosahedron, we know that a single triangle is going to be 3n squared. And as there's 20 um, triangles on the icosahedron, the number of atoms in these big structures is going to be 20 times 3n squared, 60n squared. So for these giant fullerenes, there's also a very nice way of working out the number of atoms in these structures. The number of atoms is 60n squared, where n is the number of bonds between the pentagons on the structure. More details are on my website if you want to check this out. For this particular icosahedron, we can work out that the number of edges between each pentagon is 5, so the number of atoms is 5 squared times 60, which comes out as 1,500 atoms. So it'd be hard to count the number of atoms in these giant structures, but there's actually this beautiful mass that you can use to work it out. More details are on my website.